All right, so we're back with a brand new video. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to go ahead and listen to our very first event, which is the ready event. That's the most basic event that you can listen to. And it's a good event because it lets you know when the bot is actually ready. It has successfully logged in and when it is ready. And it's also a great way to do additional other stuff too after your bot has authenticated. So let's say, for example, uh, you want to invoke some kind of database. Let's say if you want to talk to MySQL or MongoDB, or you want to call another API and make some kind of HTTP GET or POST request. You can do that in the ready event. Now, there's also other solutions to do that too, but that's just an example. So let's go ahead and listen to the ready event. So the way that we handle events in JDA, uh, it's pretty. Uh, it's actually pretty straightforward. We're going to go ahead and call this uh, this method after the JDA builder instance. So before we call the build, so let me just delete this. So before we call build, we're going to go ahead and call this add event listeners method. Okay, and this is going to allow us to register event listeners onto the JDA instance or the JDA. Uh, I should really call this the JDA builder instance. Okay. And what we need to pass in is we need to pass in instances of said event. Okay. So right now we don't have any instances of any events whatsoever, but we need to create that. Okay. And I'll show you how we can create that. So let's go ahead and let's just change it back to dot build. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into our source code and I'm going to go ahead and create a new, I'll go create a package and I'll call it events. And we're, we're going to go ahead and create a new class and I'll call this ready event listener. Okay. So what we want to do is we basically want to, we, we can do either two, we can either do two things, right? One or two things. And it gives you a more flexibility on how you want to create your events. Okay. So we can either implement an interface and the interface is called event listener, or we can extend the listener adapter class and i'll show you two different examples so don't worry let's use the first example which is implementing the event listener interface so we'll go ahead and do implements so that's the implements keyword and then event listener and we're going to go ahead and make sure that the correct event listener uh, the, the correct event listener interface comes from uh the jda library so that's this one over here net.deviation dot jda dot api hooks okay and then you're going to see that we have a red line over here and the reason why is because in java whenever you have well, whenever you implement an interface you need to implement all of its uh all of its uh, abstract methods okay and if it tells you right over here so uh it tells us that we need to implement the on event method so let's go ahead and do that so we'll just do it manually ourselves so we'll do uh override let's use the override uh Annotation and we'll do public void on events, right? That's what it's called on events. Okay, and we need to get the correct parameters. So the parameter for this one, you can just pass in generic event. So this is the the type of the event, generic event. Event. And it's generic too. Uh what's going on over here? Okay, there we go. The red line's going away. Okay. So it's generic event but this is obviously the most base level event but there's obviously more specific types of events too so for example i'm pretty sure there is a ready event type so i can do that if i want to but it's going to give us a red line because it needs to be casted so my assumption is that generic event is uh well it says it's an interface and all the other um all of the other event types uh likely extend or uh, implement this interface so uh, but don't worry too much about that though okay because like i said if we implement this events listener we need to make sure we override the exact method with the exact parameters and the parameter type needs to be the same okay but what we can do now is we can check to see if the event is an instance of ready event like this and this is going to be imported from the events package over here and if it is, we can go ahead and just write system out dot print. The bot is ready and online. Okay, and if we were to look at ready event over here, you can see that this is a class. Okay, but uh, event is going to be a type of ready event. 
Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and rerun the bot. And I'm just going to just click on stop and rerun. All right, now we're not done yet. We need to go ahead and go back to our Discord bot.java file. And we need to actually register this ready event listener. So what we have to do is we have to go ahead and add event listeners. So we're going to call the add event listeners method. Okay. Let me, let me delete build real quick. And all we need to do is just create an instance of our ready event listener class. Okay. So new ready event listener, just like that. And then we can call build. And let's go ahead and rerun the application. And you can see now we re-logged in and it says the bot is ready and it's online. So that works. So now we know how we can create our own events and we can register them. We're not create our events, but create our own event listeners uh, and listen to those specific events, right? And we just did that for the ready event. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and listen to message events now, right? How do we do that? So this is a two-step process. Uh, so now with uh, the latest changes to Discord, we need to enable intent, intent if we want to actually uh, receive message events, okay? And it's really easy. All we have to do is right over, let's see. We can go ahead and go over to JD Builder and we can actually just call the enable intents method right over here. And we need to pass in the correct intent. And we can do that by just simply doing gateway intent. So this is going to be, I believe, an enum. And then we have to pass in the message content intent right over here. Okay. Now I can also just, uh, instead of just doing it on one line over here on line 11, I can actually just do this JD builder dot enable intents and then I can just call add event listeners like that. Okay, you can pretty much chain the method like this. So let's do gateway intent dot message content. Okay, and I'm pretty sure we can pass in multiple uh, intents inside this method over here. Yeah, so we also will need to enable we will also will need to enable other intents too such as the guilds. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Let's enable the guild intents. Um, let me see, why is it? Is there one for guilds or do we have to, uh, let me see. Guild message reactions. Let's just do guild messages, I guess. Okay, there we go. We'll, 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 leave, we'll leave it like that for now. All right, cool. Now let's go ahead and we need to go back to the Discord portal, the developer portal. And we need to also enable intents for our application. So what you want to do is you want to go back to the dev portal, go over to your bot, and go over to the bot section over here. And you want to make sure you enable the message content intent right over here. Okay. So let's go ahead and go back to our code. And let's go back to the events folder. Let's create or package folder. Let's click on, uh, let's create a new class and I'll call this message event listener. Okay. And uh, so the first way that we created the event, uh, we implemented the event listener. In this example, I'll show you the example on how we can uh, extend the listener adapter class. Okay. And if you want m more examples, you can just go over to the documentation or the, uh, the GitHub repository, and you can actually just look at the uh, README because they have a lot of examples over here, okay? So we'll go ahead and extend the listener adapter class, and this comes from the hooks package from the, from the JDA package over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit Control O, and I forgot I mentioned this um, because uh, for those who don't know, uh, you know, what are the possible methods to to override? You can either consult the documentation or something cool to do is just hit control O and you can just look at all the methods. So the one that we want to override is the on message. I think it's on message received. So whoops, on message received. And I'm going to go ahead and just click on OK. And it's just going to go ahead and set that up for us. Okay. 
So you can see that right over here that the type is message received event. Now, if you did not want to use listener adapter and you wanted to use, uh, if you wanted to implement the event listener instead, all you would need to do, an additional thing I need to do is just check to see if the event was an instance of message received event like that. Okay. But we know that this is going to receive message events. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, just do a system out print. And I'll just go ahead and get the contents of the message. So uh, the correct method that we need to call is get message. And we want the actual message contents. So we should be able to just get the content raw. Yeah, I guess content raw or content display. I'm not really sure what the difference between these two are, but I'll just go ahead and just print that out. So let's just do user sense and then concatenate that right over there. And of course, we need to register this message event listener by going ahead and adding it to this method over here. So let me just format this a little bit. I don't have any extensions with my IntelliJ, so I need to manually format this. So I want to go ahead and uh, get that message event listener class. But for some reason, it's not. Uh, I'm not sure why it's giving me issues over here. Message. Oh, actually, I don't even need to import that message event listener. Or maybe I do. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's imported up there. Perfect. Okay. Before it was, now it's, now it's, now it's being imported. Perfect. Okay, so we do need, we actually need to import it from the package, which is easy, right? Import events dot, and then the name of the package. I'm just going to do events asterisk. So this will just import all the packages for us. Okay, so that's pretty simple. So that way we don't have to import every single one manually. Let's go ahead and restart the bot. Perfect. So let's go to our Discord server and let's just go ahead and type a message. And let's look at our logs and you can see that we have the log. It says user sent and the message itself. Hello. Hi. It says hi. All right. If we were to send other stuff, let's say if we were to send an emoji. Let's do check. Check mark, right? It would go ahead and show you the emoji right over there. Well, it won't show you the emoji unless, I mean, unless if it was an, a, a Unicode emoji, right? Like white check mark, it would show you that over there. Okay. But that's pretty much how uh, you can listen to events, right? We listen to the ready event and we also listen to the message event as well. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So hopefully you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.